so uh, Stephanie uh, Lamore, the filmmaker, when she went to Bahrain, um, spent uh, you know one month undercover taking all the footage in. Uh, she was basically collecting all the video footage until she was able to smuggle herself out uh, from the country. And uh, then when she uh, arrived into, in France, I recently moved with my wife to France because she's a French citizen. Uh, and uh, she was able to contact me through the uh, protesters and activists back in Bahrain. And they told her, oh, there's a Bahraini who's there in France. And she contacted me and then I worked with her to basically translate the footage to make the film. Um, I'm a protester just like all the other, you know, people who went out to protest and uh, for in Bahrain we, we have an uprising every 10 years. So I grew up in the 90s uprising, you know, from 1994 till 1999 uh, and, you know, due to the situation and in the, in the polit political turmoil that's happening, it is, it is part and parcel of, of, of even the culture as well, you know, the whole village comes out to protest. So, and, and, and my village as well, because we get punished collectively as well by, by the riot police, so we go out to protest. So when the revolution started in uh, February, 14th of February, 2011, I just joined in to protest uh, just like everybody else. Uh, and, you know, any kind of opportunity that I can do. So for example, translation, I, would, I will translate, you know, to support the cause. At the current time as well, I'm, I'm a member of Bahrain Watch, uh, which is an NGO group that tries to promote government accountability. So we have a website, bahrainwatch.org, where we document all the government's promises of reform, the government's prom promises of an open policy door. And we document basically, for example, that they've been denying access to journalists and you know, to uh, human rights organizations and NGOs for the past two years or they've been using, uh, you know, kind of uh, weapons against protesters that are bought from the US, from uh, France, from Germany, you know, these are countries who are supposed to be democratic and not selling these weapons, you know, to be suppressed. So we, we're trying to kind of document these and keep things, you know, to, to, to hold these kind of officials accountable. It, it definitely changed. It definitely changed. And, and the government's behavior shows in, in, in how things change. Uh, fundamentally, nothing has changed. The, uh, because, because the uh, Saudi military and the Emirati military, you know, came in to basically support the royal family in crushing, you know, the protests brutally by force. Um, we haven't seen any kind of, you know, major shift in Bahrain not being a military ally by the U.S. There's still a military ally. There are still corporations between the military of Bahrain and, and you know, Western powers as well, you know, including NATO. Uh, so, so these things that are the pillars of, of, of power for the royal family haven't changed. And hence, they are, have been less uh, kind of willing to actually enact reforms to actually, you know, uh, meet the demands of the people. However, their international standing amongst the international community has been very much tarnished and affected. A lot of the people have been sold this image of very wealthy Gulf that, you know, is an oasis of happiness and, you know, liberalism. And what happened during the up uprising is that it gave, us, gave the world a wake up call that actually, no, What's happening is very different and there's a reality that people haven't seen. So now basically, you know, uh, international news agencies, organizations, because of the government's reaction to them, you know, uh, these NGOs, you know, more in the past two years, more than 220, 230 kind of, you know, people were denied access. This is including members of the European Parliament, members of the United Nations, you know, human rights of all. You know, members of NGOs such as Bahrain, uh, f such as uh, Human Rights Watch, um, uh, Physicians Against Human Rights, Reporters Without Borders, even, you know, Doctors Without Borders, they had a small facility to uh, treat injured protesters. They were raided by the government and kicked out. So they've, they've ruined their relations with all these kind of, you know, civil kind of, you know, society organizations and bodies around the world. 
and they are feeling that pressure and hence they're hiring you know uh, many pr companies in the us and in the uk and in uh, in the west to polish their image they've spent millions of dollars if you go on our website bahrainwatch.org we have a documentation of the contracts that happened we couldn't find them a lot of them we couldn't find in bahrain but we can find some in the kind of you know tender kind of you know uh, lists in the us to show that the the government is spending millions just to polish the image you know to to put things in the media that show for example you know they pay cnn you know to kind of show the uh, reform and the economy rising and the formula one kind of you know race car they use these kind of you know uh, projects to show that no things are fine the economy is great we're still in power we pe our people still love us but they're finding it very hard because in true reality they are using force and suppression against the protesters and all these images are coming out on youtube all these images are coming every day if you go just search bahrain every day there's a video Every day there's like, you know, a protest happening in Bahrain and there are violations that are systematically committed and they can't wash that away. They can't wash that away. So this, this has changed. The, they don't feel that they are respected if, they, if you have, you know, Bahraini princes coming around here. They won't feel the same, you know, kind of uh, feeling that they used to have, that they can roam around freely, you know, especially, you know, in the West and people give them respect as people, as a... As a uh, as a royal family that developed their country and made it, you know, prosperous. They, they don't have that. So that's the kind of thing that changed for them. So the ultimate aim for, for, for the people right now is that they want, in Bahrain specifically, they, they want to have a constitution that they write and that they, uh, uh, that they have a referendum on and that they actually share in the power. They want to have an elected government. Uh, we've been governed by the prime minister, who's the uncle of the king, for the past 40 years. Okay, and enough is enough. Uh, people don't want that guy anymore. And uh, they have seen that, you know, there has been an inability to use the current cosmetic parliament that uh, the king has. Uh, you know, in accounting for the government kind of, you know, corruption and the government's violations. So people want to be able to basically elect the people that govern the country. They want to be able to elect the parliamentarians completely. There's no, uh, not unlike now, which is half appointed, half elected. And they want to have a, you know, independent judiciary so that they can feel safe. Uh, so that when they see that the government official or the prime minister is actually corrupt, they can change him. They don't want to be stuck with the same person doing the same violations again and again. So in, in terms of where is it going, the, 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 the situation is as dire as the reaction of the government had. Because they used force, the people are much more angrier. Because they you know, are, are, are still locking up people, you know, there's more than 1,500 you know, political prisoners in Bahrain that haven't been released and people are still being put in prison, you know, all the time. Protests are still banned, uh, you know, and, uh, and are not allowed, uh, which is a problem. I mean, in the end of the day, people want to feel free to express themselves on the street. They want to feel free to express themselves, you know, on, online. And what the government is showing is that, uh, what the government is showing is that it uh, does not want this kind of, you know, uh, these kind of, you know, rights to be established by the people. But they have been entrenched. They have been entrenched in Bahrain for, for 100 years of uprisings every 10 years for each little reform. And people know that if we don't, you know, keep on fighting for it, nothing will change and things go worse. So people are, will still protest. The people were protesting when the military, you know, came and besieged their villages. Uh, you know, and, and this and, and these are this is a people that we don't have weapons. It wasn't it wasn't Yemen or Syria. You know, Bahrain. You know, the people don't have weapons. Only you know the government has. And when the uh, tanks and the armed vehicles were surrounding their houses, they still came out in the middle of the night. The boys still came out and just protested, because they were they they don't want to accept it anymore. So if they were doing it then when emergency law was on. 
don't expect now, now that the government is trying to polish its image uh, internationally and say nothing is happening, don't expect the people to go back to their homes. It's not going to happen until something fundamentally changes. Promises of reform, promises of, you know, uh, better conditions won't make it, uh, won't cut, uh, you know, uh, won't let the people go back.